Good morning and welcome to our webinar on building a Neo4j machine learning application and deploying it into production in 90 days. I'm Nathan Greenhut, Head of Accounts for Hopsworks in the Americas. I have with me today David, our Head of Data Science at Hopsworks, as well as Yogesh, our Head of Solutions at Hopsworks as well. Yogesh is going to kick it off and walk you through why Hopsworks, why now? Thank you, Nate. Uh, hi, this is Yogesh. Uh, uh, um, hi, everyone. So today, let, let's go over the agenda. So we are going to talk about uh, the Hopsworks platform, the benefits of using Hopsworks platform, the whole process of building a machine learning model all the way to the production in 90 days, how this can be achieved, and we'll show this in action. Um, from a business problem perspective, we'll choose an example to to kind of you know demo this out. So we'll be probably taking a supply chain as an example for this. Um, and why Hopsworks can you know help you build a better ML pipeline. Uh, on the demo demo, we have Hopsworks Neo4j. These are the systems that we are going to use as a part of this demo. So, so why why Hopsworks is is the platform? You know why why is it the right platform to use for this uh, these kind of applications? Uh, and you know these are some of the testimonies from our customers, as you can read it out here. The bottom, but the bottom line is you know. What Hopsworks really provide you is a platform to build your ML application uh, without uh, you have all the Python APIs, you have a no code accelerator. And then finally, it's a single platform where you can run all your applications in a scalable manner. So the, the most important reason why you would be looking to the Hopsworks is for consistency of your application, having all the features in one place and be able to scale your applications uh, out of the box. So that's what Hopsworks is pro will be providing you. And that's what how our customers are getting benefited today. So if you were not using Hopsworks, if you're not a Hopsworks uh, platform user, then uh, you'll then probably on the left hand side is what we are looking at. This is the traditional way of building ML applications where teams are uh, provided raw data and they do their feature engineering within their own sandboxes. And, uh, and that kind of creates a silo because now the same feature is being engineered more than once by different teams uh, because there is no central repository, there is no version management. Uh, and then once these models are developed using those features, the models makes its way into the uh, to the IT team and which may they have to rewrite these uh, the model building pipelines. Uh, there could be various reasons for this because you know people may not be using uh, consistent libraries. Uh, they are not using a singular platform which can make sure everything is consistent across. And that can also lead into scalability issues versus if you were using a platform like Hopsworks, <clears throat> which is a unified single platform, pretty robust, and it comes with all the open modular APIs, you can build any number of applications using one single platform. So as you can see here, some of our customers are running more than six, seven applications right on one platform. So today we will take one of them as an example, the supply chain, that how we can build this application in a short amount of time. And then we can also look into a few other apps, you know, if time permits. So what's really Hopsworks solving in terms of the problem, right? So before Hopsworks, obviously, uh, as I mentioned, there could be inconsistency in terms of how people are doing, like, you know, the data scientists are doing the feature engineering. There could be redundancy as well, uh, and that could lead to inconsistency. So suboptimal prediction and performance, because the, the impact of inconsistency is really, uh, you know, on your model uh, performance, right, in terms of its accuracy. So two different users building different type of models may be using trying to build, use the same type of feature, but since they are not consuming the features out of a centralized repository, they may end up having different business logic and that can really generate different results, in turn generating different uh, different level of accuracy for the model. So that can really create, uh, that can you know really lower down the, the value that you're trying to bring in to solve the business problem. Uh, <clears throat> again, if you have a singular platform, you can work on a single standard that way uh, you know, different communities within the organization are not working on different standard. They're all using a single platform to keep things consistent. Uh, of course, you know, scalability, consistency, auditability, all of that comes along, right? Uh, and then in the whole deployment process. So, <clears throat> I mean, with, with Hopsworks, without Hopsworks, obviously you are uh, doing uh, all the code development that is happening for the data science pipelines, whether it is in a tool or a, or a notebook, all of that has to be brought together in a unified manner to run into some custom uh, ML platform, right? Maybe you might have built something very custom, 
which means we need to make sure it is compatible with all the libraries that are available in the platform. Also, we need to make sure that the feature calculation and the feature engineering is done consistently across multiple applications that have been built in silo. So this can lead down to slowness in terms of the deployment of the whole plat ML, plat ML model itself uh, or your application. So that is where Hopsworks is going to come in. It's going to give you uh, an automated CI-CD process which allows you to do things consistently and in a fast manner. Uh, so this is really like a better, faster, cheaper kind of approach, you know, uh, to build your features, to manage your models right into a singular platform and not compromising on anything in terms of the enterprise quality standards. So data governance or the model governance is a part of the platform itself. You get that out of the box. That's going to also make sure that you're, uh, you know, you're able to convince your auditors uh, in terms of the, the, the standards you need to use as per the uh, enterprise definitions. <clears throat> so better, faster, cheaper, that's really the, the theme behind it. We want to make sure that this platform allows you to achieve all three of them, not just to better prediction or faster predictions, but it, it needs to really cater to all these three because this is what is going to uh, bring efficiency, bring consistency in terms of your feature development. So better AI is what? It's all about like making better AI predictions, but which is kind of like totally dependent on the consistency of how features are computed. So Hopsox will provide you the platform to your end users where they can uh, compute their features, store into the Hopsox repository, which can then be shared across other, other users within the organization. And that's going to make sure that, you know, different models are using the same value or the same view of the feature at a given point in time, and they are able to make uh, the most accurate predictions. Um, and, you know, security and compliance, which is the whole governance idea, as I mentioned, it comes as a part of the enterprise Hopsworks platform. So that's something you don't have to build from scratch. The only thing you need to do is like build your features, build your training, train your model, and then just do the inferences out of it. <clears throat> the availability is also another aspect that we need to keep in mind when using, a, uh, when using, uh, when building an, an AI application. So we, we will guarantee you a six nines of availability because we have both online and the offline store. So the features can be consumed both in the batch and an online fashion. Uh, that makes sure that you are able to give a proper response to your application within milliseconds, right? Uh, in terms of the performance, we are using the best of the breeds uh, in terms of you know building the platform. It is used is using a lot of open source APIs uh, and also components like KSO, which makes it easier to deploy your models and scale your models as you need to do the prediction. Uh, so the overall, uh, you know, idea is to make sure that there is a consistency and efficiency across the whole ML building process, which is going to reduce your total cost of ownership, right? You don't have to really start building from the nuts and bolts. What you're really focusing upon is the feature engineering, the training and the inference. And that's what, you know, a data scientist should be focused on. And once the artifacts are developed, they can easily be migrated from one environment to another environment. There's no re-engineering required of your code. Uh, there's no rebuilding required of your code. So that's what Hospice will provide as a platform to you. So it's truly a, a platform that can scale uh, unlimited, honestly speaking, uh, because we are using every component that is being used in the Hopsworks is a horizontal scale component. Uh, the, the feature repository itself can be scaled horizontally. It can even go across region. There could be cross region replication. So if you're within a region, you can scale horizontally. If you're across regions, the replication plus scaling can really help you uh, scale to any extent you like. So for online feature stores, if you want to consume something in online and make predictions in real time, uh, you know, 20 million rows per second can really be uh, processed through. So that's like just a millisecond of latency, right? Uh, so this is really, and we have done some benchmarking across other ML platforms that are available in the market. Uh, and in the difference is really 12x, you know, you can, you can download it, you can test it out, you can also take a look at the benchmark, the link is provided here. Um, and so that's really from nanoseconds to milliseconds, right, in terms of the performance. When it comes to the offline store where you are doing a batch prediction, because this is some of the application like anti-money laundering or some like generating customer offers could be a batch type of application. So over there as well, it's all uh, read out of the feature store and we can easily you know, benchmark like a 9x per better performance as compared to the competitive platforms. Uh, that's in terms of the read, reading the feature store. In terms of the writing, it has done seven times better uh, as compared to other competitors. 
So overall, you're still getting on an average like, you know, 10 or more than 10x speed on both online and batch. And that's that's pretty, you know, uh, robust for building any kind of ML application. So <clears throat> extreme performance has always been our, our, our key focus. The whole reason to build platform is really the consistency, the, the performance scalability. So as you see here, uh, there are various components within the platform. There is an offline store to store your features. There's an online store, which is kind of keeping in cache. Then you have a compute uh, available for computing and training your models or to feature engineering. And then there are other databases involved depending upon your use case. I mean, this could be like Neo4j if you want to do something on the graph side. So we can very well integrate Hopsworks to Neo4j, <clears throat> which can then uh, help in the feature engineering and bring those features. Need any questions uh, you have for me? There's no question so far, Yogesh, but I'll um yes. I'll keep you uh, up to date on if there's any questions that come in. Okay, so on the top of these various stores that we have uh, within which is the core of the platform, there is an API layer. This API will allow you to uh, call any of these APIs using a Python library or or any other uh, you know REST APIs if you would like to to make predictions and so on. Uh, so you don't have to really build your custom APIs. APIs is very modular. They are kind of available to be consumed uh, depending upon the choice of language you're using. Um, and then you also have a user interface, which obviously, you know, this increases your productivity in terms of creating fe creating features uh, and then uh, basically use a low code accelerator that helps you to build your application. Auditing is a part of it. So you are able to audit anything that's happening within the platform in terms of who created the features, when were they pushed into the feature store, and also keeping a track of the version, right? So time tracking is a very key feature, and we are going to go <clears throat> more into the details of time tracking in the subsequent slides. End-to-end uh, -end automation is available right within the platform out of the box. So once you build your individual components like feature pipeline, training pipeline, inference pipeline, then these pipelines can be stitched together to run in an automated fashion. So you don't need another product or another tool to make it happen. Uh, it's available out of the box. And then what sits on the top of the platform is your AI application layer. Now, this could be your custom application, or this could be a product in the market or a tool in the market which connects to Hopsworks. So we will also show you one of the low-code accelerator tool, which, which kind of sits on the top of the Hopsworks and which allows you to build these applications, various applications. Uh, as you see, there are different types of apps which are being used here. Uh, and these algorithms are available within the platform to, to build these type of applications. Uh, similarly, like today, as, as I mentioned, we are going to focus on the supply chain. Uh, these are the various applications, as you see at the top, the generative AI recommendation supply chain. So this kind of gives you an idea what type of application the platform can support. And, and we have kind of handpicked these applications because this kind of cover, these are the, you know, the main applications or the critical application that enterprises are looking for. Um, along with the, as I mentioned, along with the Hopsworks, we have also Neo4j uh, coming as a graph engine. Along with this, they are kind of integrated so that you can uh, do your feature engineering within uh, the Neo4j and then bring those features back into the Hopsworks. So Hopsworks really becomes like a centralized store to store uh, all your features. Uh, they may come from any sources. It could be Neo4j, it could be something on the cloud like Snowflake or uh, any internal RDBMS databases. Uh, well, uh, now I'm going to hand over to my colleague here, David, who's going to uh, talk about how you can build a supply chain system using Neo4j features and Hopsworks. Uh, thank you, Agesh. Uh, I will share my screen now. Uh, all right, I hope you see my screen. Um, so we will now uh, demo how to build uh, ML-driven um, supply chain application using Neo4j on uh, Hopsworks. So the uh, question is, why do we need uh, ML-driven and uh, how the Hopsworks helps? Because uh, in general, um, Neo4j will provide, uh, save your data as a graph graph format, and it has all the algorithm to compute the graph features. Uh, but uh, in, a, in a real world applications, it's in, the, in the large networks, graph traversal algorithms are very slow or slower. And, it's a more computationally expensive and the memory expensive. So when you need to put a lot of requests, uh, approximation methods are proposed. So you use the landmark and the node embeddings, basically embeddings methods to approximate the shortest path, for example, 
when we do a supply chain. Also, using a Hopsworks, uh, we can you can do a you can refresh your data. You might uh, want to enrich your models with the real time features. Maybe how busy is the node, so you can redirect the sh shipment, etc. And agile and also designed to build the to work for data engineers and data science and to collaborate to build the ML system. So the system is the supply chain will be you compute a, for example we compute the node embeddings. We want to compute the embeddings for each port or node that that the shipment will be transformed. Then we want to save this. Uh, embeddings as a feature, and then enrich our uh, another features. Maybe there is a driver features. Maybe there is a road features, and uh, train a model, save it as a model as a version, and then uh, basically provides a, a inference request. Maybe we need to have the start time and the start and destination, so then we can approximate a, a um, shortest pass traversing the shortest pass. And once the model is trained, uh, and then to on top of the infrastructure hopes was provide, this inference will be uh, uh, fast in terms of a sub millisecond or a millisecond or a sub sub second level. So Hopsox is built in a way that it can facilitate uh, you to build the feature pipelines, training pipelines, and the inference pipelines. We strongly propose this division because it requires a different skill set and also has a different life cycle. Once the features are engineered, you can, uh, and using the Neo4j algorithms and the connections, then the data scientists can take over and train a pipeline. And then once the model is trained and they are happy with it, you can deploy uh, the inference. And then um, you, uh, it's online, offline store backup. It will uh, allow you. There is no uh, uh, training ser serving skew, and it also, if you if you have a large amount of requests or if, if you're computing features very fast, you can have a pre-computed features like in node embeddings uh, in in the sub millisecond level. And we uh, it's also can use the streaming data, uh, for example, how the how busy is the port. And the batch data, maybe you're computing uh, uh, embeddings on a daily basis or a monthly basis. So one of the uh, advantages that we do allow to use to, to choose uh, any your favorite framework in a feature pipeline and training pipeline, the inference pipeline, and it's uh, hopes it's open in a way that it all integrates outside. So if you have any favorite, all you can you don't need to ch change your how you train and how you feature engineer and how to infer. But it also like uh, Hopsource provides all of this also uh, out of the box. So uh, Yogesh mentioned that we do a versioning. We do a two types of versions. It's a schema versioning. So is this designed? To, so then you when you create a feature group and you train, you select the features. So you, you, then you, no schema breaking change happens. So your downstream applications will not be affected. But it also comes with a time uh, time travel or a time versioning. So you can monitor when you train your data. For example, you take a snapshot and if your model decays, you can do a monitoring. What happened between the time I trained the model and then now maybe there was some changes happened. So you can retrain a model and you also can debug if there was some changes in your data set. You can also attach tags, like maybe you have some driver profiles and you want to have a, which is a personally identifiable data. So you can, you can, uh, you can do governance around it. Now uh, we you can when you do a, your feature pipelines, uh, we support the great expectations where you can put the guardrails basically. If some uh, you you as a user and as a domain expert, you define what is uh, what the features are expected for this particular feature pipeline, and if uh, if it's outside of the defined scope, then you decide as a, if you want to fail a pipeline or you can get the alert. So this is basically how the user interface will look like on every insert. You can see how many was, if it was a validation success, how many percent, and if it was ingested or if it was a failed, and when when did it happen. Everything this can be also, uh, this is user interface, but everything this can be also, can have the API call uh, from the Python or a, or a REST or a Java. You can also do a feature monitoring once once you do train your model and you deploy it. Uh, maybe values are arriving in a, a scope you decide, but some distributions there was some shift, a feature shift. So 
if the behavior changes, uh, if some new routes were designed, etc., then you want to monitor it, and then uh, you can uh, or uh, you can see if it's shifted the distribution outside of the defined scopes, and you can retrain your model, and you get the alert basically. It's again, it's a, as a domain expert, you define what is the expected behavior and what's the limit of the distribution. Uh, Hopsworks also provides a full lineage. You can govern which features was used with which uh, feature view and which feature was used which model, etc. So it gives you a full governance. And we provide both implicit, uh, implicit, whatever you do in Hopsworks, it will be tracked and then also have explicit provenance. So you can define if some data comes outside of a Hopsworks, you can define this. And you can also, as we said, you can also define a schema, the tax. You can attach a simple tax like a personal identifiable information, or then you can define more complex ones, which we call a schema You can define a schemas of the tax, and everything will be searchable and discoverable. In Hopsworks, metadata is discoverable. So you can share it with your organization, and then if you computed some features, it will be discoverable, and then they cannot give you access or request the access, so it can be reused. So I will quickly show the just the UI and uh, um, so this um, so this is a Hopsworks UI. Um, so you, you, uh, every uh, is, this is uh, you have a feature groups here. We define the port bandings and the distances. Um, then, as a data scientist, you will select uh, um, features from the different feature groups. So then you can see, you can define here, uh, which is uh, which are the target variables, and what type of features have been selected. You have a full provenance, as I showed. Uh, statistics will be computed. So it's a good way to basically discover what's the, what's the distribution, et cetera. Um, then you have a, you can, we, we provide the storage connectors here. You can define a storage, if you want to connect to Neo4j, for example, you can predefine and your data scientists or data engineers will be will just call a this object and it will connect to a database and we can also uh, here you can deploy a model uh, and then we have a model registry and also you can schedule a jobs and everything here is a, a version as i mentioned and the, it's say if you go here uh, we can see the activity as well and then some metrics, basically, if uh, if the data when was data ingested, etc. So you can you can do a full full monitoring. Uh, and then um, yeah, I will now hand over to Yogesh that will show the no code development of the new four J features. Sure, man, uh, David. Thank you. So let's go into the solution overview. So what we just saw, uh, what David has showed us, all the features that are available within Hopsworks, right? And then these features or these uh, capabilities have been integrated with a, a no-code accelerator called Inferix. Inferix accelerator basically would allow you to configure an application in a low-code manner and be able to use all the APIs that are provided by Hopsworks, right? So you can either use the Python-driven APIs to build your application in Hopsworks, or you can use the uh, Inferix Accelerator to build a similar application, which will improve your efficiency and uh, transparency to the application. Uh, <clears throat> so this, um, so, so basically, this No Code Accelerator will allow you to build your application. Now you can build n number of applications which can run within Hopsworks, as you saw before. Uh, the Accelerator will allow you to, you know, eliminate multiple tools because it has certain capabilities. So uh, yeah, while you are building any ML application. Obviously, you want to pull in the data, you want to massage the data, do the feature engineering. Once the feature engineering is done, you want to do the training and then the inference. And finally, once the inference is done, you would like to take some actions upon it. It could be a workflow that you want to kick on, or maybe you want to build a dashboard or a report. So all of this can be done. So your end-to-end -end application can be done using the accelerator. And I'm going to show you a different demo of the same today. So let's take one use case, which is a supply chain management. So supply chain management is a process where there are shippers and who are kind of, you know, sending and receiving goods across the ports. So we are taking this as an example today. So we have configured various components within the accelerator. Uh, you have entity resolution. We are resolving all the suppliers in case you have duplicate suppliers. So the Hopsworks will provide you out of the box the algorithms to do entity resolution, which can then be configured through the accelerator. 
Uh, once we do the entity uh, uh, resolution, then we can start profiling, we can compute it, we can run all the algorithm, do the feature engineering, and do all the predictions. <clears throat> Based on the predictions we are making, we can start scoring this prediction, we can do an aggregate scoring, and then these scores can then be used to generate alerts and cases. So we'll take a quick look uh, of the application. If you want to do something more in real time, this is one demo application where we are pulling data in real time from the source system through a Kafka queue and then putting into Neo4j. Once the data moves into the Neo4j graph engine, we do the feature engineering and extract all the features out and push it into the Hopsworx uh, feature store. Uh, once the features are available within the Hopsworx store, then we can do the training, the inference, all of that can be performed right within the Hopsworx platform. Once your predictions are made, then we can take actions upon it which means you can run business rules, you can generate alerts, you can do cases, you can do dashboard reporting and so on. So this all can be done in both batch and real time. All the platforms are well integrated. You will get the accelerator where you can build this application and orchestration end to end. So let's get into a quick demo. So before I go into the, the the Inferix no code accelerator. Let me show you uh, uh, the current landscape of you know this particular use case, the feature data set. So I, I'm into the Hopsworks UI here, and what I can do is I can look for a feature group. So for example, we have created a feature group for the supply chain demo. Uh, it says supply. So it allows. So the basically the UI is allowing me to search any feature uh, data that is available. The feature groups. I can click on this. So here I can look at all the yeah. properties or the features that are available within this group. Some of these features are coming from the raw data. Some of the features like total cost or the um, page rank score, these are coming from the graph algorithms from Neo4j. It also tells you what's the primary key on the on that particular feature data set. This is basically a company ID, which has been labeled as name. Uh, it tells you what is the data type for each of these features. And you can also add or remove features from here. So every time, you're adding the feature data to Hopsworks, it's going to create a new version of it. So right now I'm at version one, as you can see that. If I if we upload another, if you recompute these features through the accelerator and push it into the Hopsworks, you're gonna see a, a different version altogether. And in future, if you want to train against an older version, you can supply a version number, either through the Python API or through the low code accelerator, and you can train against the older data or a specific version of data at a given point in time. Uh, some of the other features that uh, uh, David spoke about provenance expectations, we haven't configured yet on this particular demo that I'm showing you today. Uh, but if you want to call, uh, if you want to use an API to get the feature data out of the feature store, you can get a ready code here. So here you can see it's saying version one. So you can pick any version you want. So the default will be the latest version that you want to get if you don't pass a version, okay? So this is the uh, feature group uh, that is stored within Hopsworks. Now let's see how we can use the low code accelerator to create this feature group. So I'm getting into the uh, the Inferix low code accelerator here. Once you enter your user ID password, we can switch to the supply chain management application. And then once you go here, what we can do is we can go into the data science and then we can go into the feature. And this is where you can create the feature groups and features. So, so I can say an add button. And what I'm going to do is when I create the features group, it's going to store into Hopsworks. So this acts really like a low code interface. So you can build your feature, do your feature engineering, store your feature groups, feature views very quickly. So this is exactly the same feature group that we saw in on the Hopsworks. Uh, I can take a look at this. So here it says it's stored in the feature store, which is Hopsworks, which is basically this particular feature group. Uh, we can see the exact same columns that are available on both sides. Uh, if I want to quickly glance the data, I can say preview. At this point, it's going to go to the Hopsworth feature repository and pull the data for the, all the features uh, for a latest version. So these are these are the exact feature values that are present in the Hopsworth feature store. Now, uh, this could be a feature group or a feature view, depending upon uh, what you have chosen. So this particular example I'm showing you is for a feature group. Similarly, you can also create feature views. I can go back here, feature views. So <clears throat> feature view is basically a combination of features coming out of feature group. So it's thing like a database view where you're joining few tables and extracting few columns. So similar in this particular example, we are 
joining multiple feature groups. You may have a customer feature group, you may have an account feature group, and you may want to create a feature view which will take few features from each of the feature groups, and then you can combine them and create a feature view. So this can be easily achieved through the UI. You can just say, instead of saying feature group, you can say feature view, and that will allow you to basically create a feature view out of it. Once the features are created, now you can create a pipeline which will allow you to push these features into the feature store. So I'm going to open a pipeline here. So pipeline is basically um, a way to orchestrate your steps. So there are three steps here. One is the, uh, this is the prediction part. So let me take the feature writing pipeline. Uh, okay, this is the one. Yeah, so in this particular pipeline, there are a few steps involved. The first step is basically to compute the features and store the features in Hoxworks. So there is a map object which allows you to uh, take some features from the raw data, also do some calculations uh, to create new derived features. And all of this thing can be done in a low code way. So I'll show you an example where you can create these features, how you can create it. But this step will basically store the data into the feature group in the feature store. Once the data is stored, we can train a model using a train uh, component. Once the training is done, so once you train it, the training itself will execute on the Hopsworks server uh, on the compute server. Uh, once the training is done, the model will be stored in the Hopsworks repository in the, under the model registry. So now what I can do is, since I've already executed the pipeline, I can go into the model registry and I can take a look at all the models that are available. refresh so while this is coming uh, i can show you the other steps here so this is the the model training part once the training is done then you can do the predictions now these predictions can be both batch or real time which basically connects to your online or offline feature store in this particular example we have used the batch feature batch feature store uh, and we are doing the predictions in a batch manner so this is the uh, metadata object which allows you to do the batch predictions uh, these are all the models that are available, so I can click on the model here. So this is the version of the model that was trained for supply chain uh, using gradient boost tree. Okay, and you can see the performance metrics and all of that. So every time you train a model using the accelerator, it's going to make its uh, way into the Hopsworks metadata repository. <clears throat> so if I go back to the data science, and if I want to do like a lineage of uh, using the no-code accelerator, you can do that as well. So I can open a particular training pipeline and I can ask for the lineage. So as you see here, there is a model which is being trained and that is using a feature pod, which is nothing but a feature group from Opsworks. I can click on this and I can go into the feature store if I like. Uh, and also I can see where is the data coming from. So there are two different data pods, which is basically some source table coming from source system, pushing the data into the feature store and then feature store is being used uh, a feature store is being used uh, to train your model. Okay, and now you can also visualize uh, this particular uh, at an attribute level, which is basically at a feature level. So this is a train model. These are all the individual features that goes into the model itself. And each of these feature are computed using this particular input data set. So in this particular case, there are only like one or two levels of hopping or lineage happening, but this could be a very long lineage depending upon how you are bringing in your features from the source system. <clears throat> so once the features are created and the predictions are made, then we can use the, use this particular accelerator for generating uh, your uh, alerts. So I can go into the alert generation and I can configure the alert rule. So here you can provide all the information. You can choose which business rule you want, uh, what which rules you want to combine and so on. Uh, and then once this is generated, then you can define your threshold and you can generate the alerts. So now we are able to cover the complete journey of the application, not just do the data management and the feature management. Uh, we have done the data management, we did the feature management. We have also done the model management, which is building the model. And then post model creation and prediction, we are also able to take some actions. So now we can take a look at these alerts which are generated. So I'll pick an alert with a high priority on it. So this particular alert has converted into a case. So now what you can do is, once the alerts are generated, depending upon the score of the alert, you can transfer, you can generate a case out of it, and then you can start triaging that alert. So this is particular uh, alert on a particular customer. 
uh, I can see all the details of that particular customer. I can look at what alerts were created. As a part of this case, there could be one or more alerts. I can also connect to the Neo4j system because we have you we have generated those features out of the Neo4j and pushed into Opswells. So you may want to take a look at the data that is sitting in Neo4j. So here, this particular customer is uh, owning an account, is transacting at this branch, what is the address and so on. If you want to take a look at it, like which other accounts it's making transacting with, you can just double click and kind of explore all the transactions that are happening. Okay, so you get all these views from a single accelerator, right? You can also do a flow of uh, funds where how where it shows you how the money is moving between various accounts. You can do notes, you can do documentation. And the last but not the least is the workflow. So workflow is basically uh, once the alert is generated, you may want to take an action upon that and it could be a very complex action. So in this particular case, what we are doing is once the alert is generated, we are initiating that case, we are getting the case details out of the system and then we are assigning this case to an examiner. So this is an example of uh, triaging a case or triaging an alert for a particular use case and a particular company, but you can design whatever workflow you want. So we have a workflow manager which allows you to configure any desired workflow as per your business requirements. And then you can integrate that workflow into your Hopsworx system, which is basically taking actions once the predictions are made. Uh, within the tool, every record, every click is being recorded within this. So you have a history of what happened with these alerts and you can also generate notifications if you like. Uh, finally, we can create a visualization out of it. So we can create dashboards uh, using this low code accelerator. I'm going to open one of the dashboard, which is for, let's say, a monitoring purpose. So all the alerts that got generated, I can show a quick dashboard around that. So in this particular example, we are creating cases, we are creating alerts. So these were all the alerts that I generated as a part of uh, my application. Uh, we can do flow charts and other different charts that are available. So it is, this dashboard is fully customizable just through point and click. You can create uh, any visualization you want. There are out of the box around 20 visualizations available. So you can have a pod which is connecting to your source system. You can have another pod coming out of the Hopsworks. So you can connect to both the feature store as well as uh, your storage of your original data, which could be Neo4j or any source system uh, that you may be using as a part of your application. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, you can take all of these steps and you can stitch into a pipeline. So I showed you one of the pipelines which was uh, meant for uh, which was meant for the uh, all the three steps that I involved. So the this is the feature pipeline, this is the training pipeline, and this is the inference pipeline. So all of these all of these steps which are happening in the Hopswells can be done in a no code manner uh, that basically increases your efficiency in terms of building applications. You are able to better govern these applications. And also we are able to keep consistency across users so that they can collaborate with each other. So going back to the, um, let me take a brief pause and check if there are any questions at this point. Uh, Nate, is there any questions that I can answer? So Yogesh, there's uh, a question on, a, it in the title, it says that you can deploy machine learning models with Neo4j in about 90 days. What about if you uh, don't use a Neo4j model uh, within uh, your application? Is it is it quicker or is it still around the same time? Uh, well, I mean, if, if, I mean, if you're using Neo4j as one of the step in terms of configuring an application, you still have to configure it, but everything is a low code. So that's not going to make any significant difference other than that, uh, you're kind of copying your data with a Neo4j. So it's really the execution time, but the building of the application development is not going to change drastically. So when we say 90 days, 90 days include all the way from uh, modeling your graph in Neo4j, uh, pushing your data into Neo4j, uh, doing the feature engineering, generating the features, building the feature store in Opswells, executing the model, or like building the model, executing, creating a complete end-to-end -end pipeline, which can then go to production. So all of these steps can be covered uh, within like, you know, 90 days period, all the way from development to execution to the deployment, right? Um, definitely, you know, uh, uh, if you were using Neo4j and if, uh, if you're building an application without Neo4j, there will be some time savings in terms of your graph modeling and the data ingestion, uh, but that's not going to be that significant relatively. Great, and then one other question is, uh, it looks like we spend uh, time on supply chain. What other uh, types of use cases have you seen 
using Neo4j uh, and, so, and Hops works before. Yeah, so I can give one or two more examples. So we have done a fraud detection use case, which is in the AML and the fraud space where we are uh, scanning you know, customer transactions, which are happening in real time and trying to prevent fraud for the bank. Uh, so that's one use case. And all of this can be achieved by pushing your data into Neo4j, uh, then building the features and pushing the features in real time into the hops works and making the prediction. So the whole pipeline can be achieved in like milliseconds because you want to stop the fraud of the bank right away. Another use case is customer analytics where we are trying to generate the next best offer. So you can build like a recommendation engine which will push any events that are generating out of the source system into Neo4j in real time and then you know basically generate recommendations and then uh, push those recommendations into Hopsworks and so on to build the complete application. So I think uh, the, the low hanging use cases for Neo4j and Hopsworks is really the fraud use case, the supply chain and the customer analytics use case. Thank you, Yogesh. That's the last question for right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, so just want to conclude here on today's uh, webinar and the demo here. This is a summary slide. So what we are trying to propose here is like, you know, there are three major focuses here uh, that Hopsos would like to bring to your enterprise. First of all, we want to lower the cost. And, you know, obviously that's going to help you build more applications. Lowering cost is not just to save money, but can you build out 10 apps instead of three apps with the same amount of money and same amount of time? So that's what we are going to provide a value. And in turn, it's going to bring more consistency into how you do your feature engineering, feature development, and then consistent values into your downstream models, which will in turn result into accurate models and lower false positive, right? Because you don't want to <clears throat> have an inconsistent input and then generate predictions, which is not going to generate a business value for you. So that's most of the cost aspect in terms of the better predictions faster. Uh, I mean, we have built a platform which has been tested against like millions of records and you can de do these predictions in seconds. So it's a horizontal scale scale platform. It can grow, it can scale within a region, it can scale, scale across the region. So volume and velocity is fully taken care of as a part of the platform and we can guarantee you six nines of availability on that one. Uh, <clears throat> now, once you, you know, build your application using in a consistent manner where you have governance, uh, the whole life cycle of the ML application is being governed. So that generates, uh, you know, a faster time to value for you because now, you are able to build more apps in less amount of time or in the same amount of time. Uh, so you're getting gaining efficiency on individual application as well as in terms of building the number of applications. So we are providing you the low code interface which will help you build more number of apps and more easily uh, in a more flexible manner, right? <clears throat> and then if you have, uh, you know, if you would like to explore the Python APIs, then we also have API for every functionality that is out there in the Opsworks screen. Each of these functionality can be explored uh, using the Python API. And then, you know, we can take that script or the notebook and we can plug it back into the Opsworks ecosystem. So you have both the choices here. Um, and, you know, uh, if you have any more questions, please let me know. Yeah, Nate, uh, back to you. Thank you, Yogesh. Uh, thank you, Yogesh and David for the thrilling presentation today um, on how to deploy a Neo4j machine learning model into production in 90 days. Uh, I'm going to close it out by thanking everybody uh, for joining today. Really appreciate uh, everybody's attendance. If you'd like to contact us, I left this in the chat uh, on the webinar too. Uh, you can find us on our website in, a, in the contact us form. You can also go on our public Slack channel or email me directly at nathan.greenhut at hopsworks.ai. Again, thank you, and I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the week.